Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. Uh, I apologize for being late a little bit. We have somebody outside cutting the grass for the neighbors and I was hoping he will finish but look like it's going to take forever. This guy is just smoking cigarette, then he stopped drinking tea and then he go back to work. It sounds like he is a Middle Eastern like me. Uh-huh. All right. So I hope I hope it's not noisy from outside, but what we can do. Uh, we are going to call our brother Sam Shamoon, for he is our guest for today, and the topic about uh, the Trinity, which what we believe, and uh, those who believe in something called Unitarian. Uh, you know, first of all, we are people who believe in one God anyway. Trinity does not mean we believe in three gods or four gods or five gods. Uh, I'm sure all of you know that. Let us call our brother Sam Shamoon, and we will go to our topic. Hey, Brother Sam. How are you, Brother? Can you hear me? I'm um, good. Thank God. Yes, I hear you. I, I hope everybody... You guys, do you hear uh, Brother Sam Shamoon? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. By the grace of God. Okay. That's wonderful. So, uh, uh, Brother Sam, you know, yes, fir first of all, good morning. And uh, may the Lord uh, make, uh, make your uh, morning, oh, no, our morning blessed. And so we can share the truth. Uh, do you like me to share your video in the screen so everybody can see you or? Okay. Yeah, I don't care. That's up to you. That's up to you, Sipi So if you want to, fine. All right. All right. Uh, you, you know, today, actually, uh, uh, the reason we are here, uh, as you know, it's because uh, we are trying to focus in some people claim that, uh, you know, that there is something called only a Unitarian, there's nothing called a Trinity. Those who believe in Trinity, they are wrong, as those people yeah. they claim. <laughs> so uh, first, uh, Sam, I want to ask you, those people, they base their belief in what? <clears throat> well, yeah, by the way, however this guy is, that's not doing your law, tell him we'll pay him to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you hear it? You can hear it or no? Yeah. You can? Yeah, can hear, but it's a, okay. But that's, we got to do that. But before I do that, let's just, uh, I just want to say, praise be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, mean, I beseech the Father in Jesus' almighty name to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to anoint you and me with the Holy Spirit, to guide us by the power of the Holy Spirit, to speak truth without error for the glory of Jesus, and bless his people, and to wash us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. We love you, Father. Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We need you. Take over in Jesus' name. Um, well, these Unitarians... They claim to be Christian, but as you stated, you mentioned it yesterday, I believe, and they are not Christian. You can claim to be a Christian, but a Christian is someone who follows the teachings of the Bible and doesn't try to twist the Bible, pervert the Bible like Muslims do to make the Bible say something it doesn't. So these Unitarians will tell you that the Father alone is God. Jesus is a man. That's it. So they're like Muslim CP. They say that mm -hmm. Jesus only began to exist when he was conceived in the womb of his virgin mother, but there wasn't the Son of God before he became flesh. There wasn't this person called the Word before he became flesh, before creation. They don't believe that. And some of them would believe the Holy Spirit is either the power of the Father or the presence of the Father. So <clears throat> that's what they believe. That's why they're called Unitarian. They believe the Father alone is God. And that's not the teaching of the Bible, as we'll try to prove by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, Sam, then uh, those people, they come with this idea from where? I mean, if we go the first page in the book of Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the earth, and the earth was uh, uh, without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the water. So from the first few lines in the Bible we have, verses saying at least for the beginning, there's God and there's his spirit, right? Yeah. So what we would do with that, if we, if the, the, what those people do with this verse? Before I do that, they say my mic is too low. I, I can't help that. Everyone's saying they ah. can't hear me. I can't help that. So that's okay. uh, this, that as long, I have it as loud as I can on my end. So I don't know what to do. Guys, is his voice better now? I increase the sound. 
I've increased the sound from his side. Is it, just get... is it better? Hold on, yeah, yeah. can you guys hear me? I'm just getting some water uh, from my throat. For me, the sound is very good. I don't know why they are saying they don't hear you good. Yeah. Uh, is it... <clears throat> maybe my volume is too high compared to your volume, but I think your volume is fine. Okay, they say it's good now. Okay, <clears throat> to answer the question, they believe the Spirit of God will be the power of God. So they'll, they, they'll tell you that there, when it says Ruach Elohim, it's not a person who's there with God the Father. It is simply the power of God that he uses to create. Now, that's you can refute that, but that's what they'll tell you. This is their position. This is their understanding, right? And then they mm -hmm. try to claim that no Jew who's ever read the Old Testament <clears throat> ever came to the belief of the Trinity. If the Trinity is taught in the Bible... How come the Jews don't believe it? You know, they, they argue like Muslims, basically. Mm. Well, you know, so but we'll refute that by the grace of God. I mean to that. You see, first one, they say there's no Jew believing that. Uh, but, but where they got this from? I mean, did they have reference for this uh, belief? That's the Jew don't believe in that? Yeah, see, that's, that's, that's the case. We have many Jews, even to this day, that believe in the Trinity, you have even the Jews who followed Jesus. Obviously, we believe they were Trinitarian. Peter was Trinitarian. Paul was Trinitarian. And even up until the time of Christ, there were Jews just from the Old Testament that could see that there wasn't just one, and this is their language, one divine power. There were actually two divine powers, or we'd say two persons. So it's not a true statement. So they make a lot of assertions that are not true, but unfortunately, many of our Christian brothers and sisters do not know the Bible that well. It's not to attack them. It's just to say, we challenge you, know your Bible, and they don't know the historical background <clears throat> at the time of Christ. But glory to God. Thank the Lord for YouTube and the Internet. We're helping our brothers and sisters to be educated so that these Unitarians... Do not come and deceive them like you have someone in the comment section, Purple Rain, saying nonsense, Sam Shimon. So they can act tough in the comment section, but they won't debate us. Yeah, well, those who say nonsense, mostly they are Muslims. Uh, mm -hmm. And if a Muslim speak about sense and nonsense, that will be weird. You believe in a God who will give you an endless private part, and uh, you are talking about sense and nonsense. You, know, you better take a card and go to the movie. Uh, Sam, uh, before we start, uh, I don't know if the admin, he have your Patreon, so those who like to... Uh, support our brother Sam Shamoon. He is a he's a brother who deserve your help. He deserve he deserve your support. And as you see, uh, maybe I'm the one who exposes Islam, etc. You know what I do. But Sam Shamoon is different style. He is different. Uh, uh, let us say uh, 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 kind of uh, answers and refutation. And he is doing great job for all of us. So those who like to support him for the free to go to Patreon of uh, our brother Sam Shamoon. And I will be happy, me myself, actually. He did not ask me to tell you, by the way. This is me saying to you, uh, I will appreciate you supporting uh, such Thank a brother. You. So, <clears throat> uh, Sam, uh, yes. uh, I, as I know from history, this is not something new. It happened before. Somebody mm -hmm. said that Jesus, in a certain point, was not exist, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. You had, you had, uh, you had groups, even in what we say, the second century, after Christ that said that Jesus was a man who became adopted as the Son of God. He was a man who became adopted as the Son of God. So yes, this view, most of the views that we deal with today were views that the church already dealt with and refuted. So if we knew a little bit about church history, I'm not saying I'm a scholar of church history, so I don't want people to think, oh, Sam, no, no. I know scholars who study church history and write books about early church, and even the writings of the church fathers, they're called, you can read online for free. Mm -hmm. On New Advent, there's a website, New Advent, all of the church fathers, their writings are in English, you can read for free. When I say church fathers, I'll just mention one or two names. You have Ignatius, if those of you don't know who Ignatius is, he was a disciple of the apostles, the bishop at, at Antioch, Syria. The bishop at Antioch, Syria, he was a disciple of the apostles, on his way to being killed at Rome, he wrote seven letters to seven churches. We still have them. And there you're going to see that Ignatius glorifies Jesus as God Almighty <clears throat> and says, 
He's the son of the Father and mentions the Holy Spirit. So he was Trinitarian and Irenaeus. So if you look at the history of the church fathers, you'll see they dealt with these groups like these Unitarians. There were Unitarians back then. They dealt with them. They refuted them. Or even those who are called modalists who believe the Father <clears throat> becomes the Son or the Son is human nature of the Father. And then he is the Holy Spirit in spiritual activity. They dealt with these groups. The only problem is, is that we, because we're not familiar with their writings, we're not aware that these giants of the faith who came before us, whom Jesus used to preserve his church, already refuted their arguments. Hmm. Already did. All right. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, those who have a question, don't send it to me in Skype. I will ignore you and I will block you. This is why we have the chat here. When you send it in Skype, I have a 10,000, 20,000 people in my Skype. So don't do that. So if you want, just send your your question in the chat, and when it's time to answer the questions, we will go for that. So uh, Sam, uh, by the way, this, we, if, yeah, let you know, just to let you know how Satan's working overtime. Yeah. Now here I have someone mowing the lawn outside. <laughs> okay, it's a corporation. <laughs> no, it's all right, no problem. Still, we hear you good. Uh, so Sam. You know, those people who come with this idea of Jesus uh, adopted, I mean, what does that mean exactly? Why God need to adopt anyone anyway? If God is exist and he is the almighty, uh, I mean, what this is idea? I mean, a man he adopt because he cannot have kids. Uh, or maybe he is doing a merciful work. Uh, like somebody is a child, he's a homeless in the street. So what this point of this adoption, I mean, how they come to this? I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. what, they, they sleep, they eat some kind of food, they wake up in the morning, they have yeah. an idea, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's because they already have come to the conclusion in their mind, the Father alone is God Almighty, only the Father. And they see in the New Testament that Jesus was a man who did mighty deeds and miracles. And so they don't want to accept that Jesus is God who became man because they believe the father of Jesus, he alone is God. So then they try to explain what the Bible says about Jesus in a way that agrees with them. So they'll say, ah, at the baptism, when the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm talking about this ancient <clears throat> heresy. That's when he became the son of God. Now others today, today's Unitarians that we're dealing with, this group today, mm -hmm. will tell you it's the Bible that says that Jesus only becomes God's son and only comes into existence when he was conceived in the womb of his virgin mother, Mary, by the Holy Spirit. So the ancient heretics thought that Jesus became God's son at baptism. These Unitarians that we're dealing with today, the Unitarians of today, mm -hmm. will tell you Jesus is God's son in the womb when Mary conceived him by the Spirit because that's the only time he came into existence, into life. And since God's the one who caused her to get pregnant by the Spirit, he's his actual father without sex. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you see here, I, I have an, uh, like a little question to help the, the audience to, to understand. You know, when we say, when Jesus said, uh, before uh, Abraham I am, uh, I am the Alpha, I am the beginning, you know. When the Bible says everything was by uh, created by him and for him. So what you would do with those? Yeah, 100%. That's why uh, <clears throat> we need to learn their arguments and how to refute them. I actually have a debate with a Unitarian. I believe his name was Andrew Griffin or Griffith. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. But go listen to the debate. We had two debates. One on a Christian channel marlon wilson his name is marlon wilson and then he came and called me on skype you'll see by the grace of the triune god he didn't know how to answer the objections and i answered his but that will give you an idea of how they explain these passages way like john one but the christians need to know how to respond so the way you respond you need to show that jesus before he became man was there in the old testament appearing as god so this is the first thing we need to do. Show that though Jesus is a man, he's more than a man, and he existed before he became a man, and show the places in the Old Testament where Jesus appears as God. So that's what we need to do, and that's how you refute them. Because once you show them 
in the Old Testament that the one God is more than one person, then that's it. It's over for them because that's what they're hoping to try to get you to see that in the Old Testament, only the Father is God. But you can go to the Old Testament and show them the messenger of God. In Hebrew, it's Malach Elohim, Malach Yahweh. He's not a creature, but he's sent by God, who claims to be God, who does things that God alone can do, who is worshipped as God, and even God acknowledges him as God, one with him, because that is the one who then becomes Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary. And this is an ancient teaching of the church. This is not my belief or CP's belief. There's another Christian writer of the second century after Christ. His name is Justin Martyr. Guys, everything I tell you, I want you to search. Search it on Google, Sheikh Google, the greatest uh, alim the world has seen, Sheikh Google. Put in Justin Martyr, and I have an article on Justin Martyr on my, <clears throat> my blog. Justin Martyr is writing around 150 AD. He was a Greek, actually a Samaritan, who converted to Christianity, and he's debating a Jew. It's, it, the name of his book is called Dialogue with Trifo the Jew, right? Sorry about that. My connection seems to be slow. Dialogue with Trifo the Jew. In it, he uses the Old Testament to prove that Jesus the Messiah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who appeared to Moses, the God who gave the law, before he became flesh, and he says, that angel of God, who is God, that's Jesus Christ. So this is an ancient belief. Right. We didn't make it up. Jehovah, right, same as uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they, they sort of some information from the past and they, they make it, uh, they, uh, they create it and you believe it's called Jehovah's Witnesses. So, uh, so uh, Sam, when, when you say, uh, if I say to someone from those who believe uh, in this uh, uh, cult, uh, okay, what do you do with John uh, chapter one? Where it says yes. in the beginning that was the word and was uh, was God and the word was God. What what they what they say about that? What is the response? Yeah, they'll tell you. This is again. I know it sounds silly, but I'm going to show you what they say and how to respond because I want to also help Christians refute them. They'll tell you that when it says in the beginning was the word, it means the plan of God. That in God's mind, He had the plan mm. of saving mankind by Jesus Christ. And that plan became a re reality when Jesus was created. That's but, what they're going to tell you. But how, how this is can be a plan if it says that and the word is God himself? Yeah, that's that's again shows you that they really are desperate. But they'll again say, well, because the plan is divine. It is a divine plan. It means the plan was divine. Now, again, I know it sounds silly for us. I'm just telling you that's how some of them argue. There are some who argue this way because remember, Unitarians, it's not one one group. There are various groups that are all Unitarian and they may not use the same arguments. But one argument they use here is that this refers to the plan of God that became a reality when Jesus was created and he fulfilled the plan and the plan was divine. It's a divine plan because it comes from the mind of God, not the mind of a creature. So That's how some explain it. It sounds like uh, like Muhammad, and when they say to us that the Holy Spirit is Jibril, when you ask them, or in your book even it says that, he says to you, uh, you know, it's uh, clear, you know. Well, where it says, uh, where, well, I mean, it's so clear to the point we have we have to look for it all over, but we cannot find it. So yes. here, when they say it's a plan, can they sponsor this idea, or this is just a stupid thing, just we say as we wish? And I can yeah. say now this is not a plan. I can say this is an airplane, maybe, but this is stupid yeah. because I can I can make any claim. But in the same in 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 the book of John, which is the a uh, uh, major teaching about Christ in, in chapter number one, where it says all things was made were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that you know. So everything is made by Him. And him who? This is go back to Jesus, right? Okay. Well, the, you're asking me. Now, well, you ask them, they'll tell you it should be all things were made by it. And because God created everything in view of that plan, in view of that, <clears throat> of his purpose of having Jesus come to redeem all things that he made. Uh, I'm just telling you how they speak. So, but that's why I refute okay. them, yeah. So you are saying that in their translation, they take the word him and they put the word it? Yeah, they'll tell you that you have translations that are very ancient, like before the King James that used the word it. Hmm. Well, that doesn't prove anything. That's because 
in in the Greek language, yeah. you have see you you because you know Arabic, you know that in Arabic nouns have gender. They're either masculine or fem, feminine, right? Right. In Greek, you have masculine nouns, feminine nouns, and nouns that they call neuter, meaning it's not male nor female, but it doesn't mean it's not a person. I'll I'll give you example for people who speak English, they understand. The word for spirit in Greek is pneuma or pneuma. That word, it's not masculine, it's not feminine. It's neuter, it's called neuter. But it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is not a person. But in Hebrew, the word spirit is ruach, it's feminine. So see, this is the trick. Sometimes you have nouns that are neuter, meaning it's not masculine, it's not feminine. So you'll describe it as an it, not because it's not a person, but that's just how you do grammar. That's just the grammar of the noun. You get my point? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so this, but, they try to play with. Okay, let's say they can get away with this by by such an excuse. What about tons of verses, including? I mean, we can go, uh, uh, you know, to uh, uh, the, the 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 letters that the disciple they used to send to each other, you know, to explain who is Jesus, like what Jesus did, you know, when when the Bible says. Uh, uh, like for him, all things was were created. All th all things for him were created and by him. So what we will do with this? Him here is it too? Yeah. Now, CP. Now I I'm telling you how they're going to respond, but we need to start refuting them because they're going to tell you no. It doesn't mean Jesus created. It says God created with Jesus in mind. Those passages you're quoting, it's because God created everything with Jesus in mind because it's all for Jesus, all about Jesus and that Jesus is going to save it, but he didn't personally create it. They explain all this away. That's why we need to start refuting them in a way they can't get a, uh, get away from it. Okay, so, so when you so, Colossians 1, yeah. say, no, what it means is, in him all things were created, meaning in view of him, God had him in mind when he created everything. Hmm. So... That's how you get around with Graham. So, by the way, just... Before I go there, yeah. just to correct them, if you go back and read John 1, verse 2, let me just get it for you. The word, let me just, real quickly, let me just confirm, because I don't want to just speak from my memory, because even though we've done this for years, sometimes, you know, we're human, yeah. our computer system shuts down. For those of you who want to know, when it says, he was in the beginning, the Greek word is hutas, hutas, and it's masculine. It's a masculine noun. So it should be he, not it. So mm -hmm. even though their argument will be, well, yeah, you know, uh, it should be an it. Actually, the word here, hutas, is masculine. It is a masculine. So it should be he. But they'll still say, well, yeah, but that's the grammar. And even though it's masculine, it still should be translated as it. So just be aware of their arguments, and I don't want to confuse people and make this more difficult than it is, because there are ways to refute them, right? There are ways so, to refute them. So how the plan, if it's a plan, have authority to forgive sin, have authority, if it's just a plan, I mean, okay, let us say God gave a plan uh, to create things, and uh, supposedly Jesus was an idea in the mind of God, and, uh, uh, and, and the plan, uh, let us say, a, a practice in the ground. So... What about Jesus saying your sin is forgiven? Yeah, is that They'll the plan? Say, again, yeah, you know, well, see what you're you're doing is you're having me respond to them. But let me know when you want to refute them because we're making a case for them. They'll say the same way Jesus says in John twenty twenty three to the disciples: Whomever sins you forget have forgiven, they've been forgiven. Whoever sins you don't forget forgive have not been forgiven. They'll go to John twenty twenty three because God can give you authority to pronounce forgiveness of sins. Yeah, but uh, I'm just telling you. How yeah. Them, so we need to start but, them. CP. But but this is authority he is giving them. They don't have it, right? So how he can give authority if he don't have the authority? You know, I mean, uh, like in, in order, if somebody, if I get a driver license, uh, I can drive, right? But uh, but still, I need an authority to give me the driver license. Here in their case. Uh, I can say, I can say to anyone, your sin is forgiven, but doesn't mean I have authority, doesn't mean that my words is uh, taken seriously and mean anything. So anyone can say, your sin is forgiven. But Jesus, when he speaks, he is given authority, correct? And he has the authority, he forgave already, and now they are receiving authority from him. They don't have the authority. Yeah, now, uh, 
See, CP, you're making me uh, take the role of the Unitarian. I'm trying to refute them, but every time you bring this, I'm going to have to now respond back. They'll say, because Jesus said all things have been given to him by the, his Father, and all authority has been given to him. He didn't have it. The Father gave it to him. That's how they're going to answer you. Matthew 11, 27, Matthew 28, 18. So, so far now, I've defended them. When are we going to refute them? Right. You get know what I'm saying? Go I don't ahead. want to make it for them, because okay. now... All right. I'm, that's why I'm telling the Christians here, you got to know how they're going to argue. They're going to say, yeah, the Father gave Jesus all authority. Matthew 11, 27, all things have been given to me by my Father. Mm. Or in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. They'll say, yeah, just like Jesus gave it to the apostles, the Father gave it to Jesus so he can give it to the apostles. But that's why we need to know how to refute them. These Unitarians have studied our arguments to show why our arguments are weak. They're not weak, but... If we don't know how they're going to respond, they're going to mislead people in thinking our arguments are weak. So this is why we need to now show why they're twisting the Bible and their arguments are bad. So the best way, the best way to refute a Unitarian, the best way, because I learned the hard way from reading their articles, watching their videos and debating them. The best way to show Jesus is not simply a man authorized by the Father, you know, chosen by the Father and given authority by the Father, but they didn't, he himself is God. I don't know. Is my connection good? Because I see it's freezing. No, no, it's, right? it's fine for me. Don't worry. Oh, okay. all right. Just want to make sure because I want them here. Now, going back to John 1.1. Now, if you want me to start refuting them, I'll start Go ahead. refuting them. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying, to, get, uh, trying like, uh, uh, to give people ideas how people, they come to us. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to play them, you know, so like you you uh, yeah, sure. go ahead sir, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, and I the reason why is I don't want to make people think their arguments are good because I keep saying what they're gonna say <laughs> Their arguments are bad if you know your Bible hmm. when we go back to John 1 1 to 2 This is how I'm gonna help you guys refute the Unitarians. I'm gonna help you guys refute the Unitarians When it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God This is where you're gonna focus your argument where it says the word was with God, just remember the word pros, P-R-O-S, pros, because this is written in Greek. Pros, with, it can also mean face to face with. The reason why that's important is because John is going to use the same expression or a similar expression in the rest of the gospel that proves Jesus was there with the Father in heaven before he became flesh. Now, what do I mean? You go to John 13, verse 3. John 13, verse 3. This is how I set them up. And I did this in my debate with the Unitarian. He really did not answer. These are the way, ways you're going to refute them from Scripture showing they're dishonest. They're twisting Scripture to make it agree with them like Muslims do with our Bible. In John 13, 3, I'm reading in the New American Standard Bible, but you can put it up there for them if they want to see it says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come forth from God and was going back to God. Now, guys, if you see that expression, going back to God, the words to God is pros tantheon. The same words of John 1, 1 and John 1, verse 2, where in John 1, 1, it says the word was with God. That's pros tantheon. And verse 2, it says he was with God. Pros, that word pros, tantheon, the God. Same thing in John 13, verse 3, when it says to God, that's pros, tantheon. So here's what you ask them. This is what I did in my debates with the Unitarians, and they really got stumped. This is what you ask them. Say, when it says Jesus will go pros, tantheon, to God, doesn't this mean that Jesus is going to go to heaven as an actual person who's going to actually be there face to face with God. They'll say, yes, he's going to be there as an actual person with the father face to face with him. So he's not going back as an idea, right? They'll say, no, I go, okay, now you have two problems. If you agree here that when this verse says Jesus is going to God, the father in heaven, so he's going to go there as an actual living person, not as an idea. And he's going to actually be there face to face with the father. Then notice the first part of the verse. He came from God. If the going to God means he's going there actually as a person face to face with the Father, 
Then coming from God means he came down as a person, the Son, who came down from the Father out of heaven into the world, and he's going back to the Father, same way he came down. He came down from the Father, he's going back to the Father. So if the going back means he went, went there as an actual person, not as an idea, then he didn't come down in his idea, he came down as a person. You see the point? Mm -hmm. uh, you see, you can't get right? Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, for us, we understand fully, fully. Mm -hmm. But if there is anyone from those who believe in this belief, if you have a question, if you have a response for what uh, Sam is saying, please feel free, and I will be happy to take your uh, response or your, your, your answer. Uh, uh, Sam, so now the, the verse in front of us, uh, the one you choose uh, about uh, John 13. Uh, okay, jo Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand. Here, here I find that, I, that to say this is, was an idea, I mean, it's silly because he is knowing, you know. So an, yeah. an idea, it's just a plan. It doesn't know anything. You know, the exactly. idea itself is, uh, uh, is, is, a, uh, is a, let's say, a, a virtual uh thinking and i am going to practice that uh, thing which is in my mind it's not a physical thing it's not uh, something in the hand it's not a person so when he's saying in, in uh, jesus knowing that the father the idea knowing the father yeah. yeah well they'll say because now he's a man he knows as a man because this is jesus as a man on earth right about before getting crucified mm. right? so so that's what so they'll say it's the man who knows because it's right on the evening when he's going to be betrayed and crucified. That's what they're going to say, right? But what you get them to admit is when it says he's going to go to the Father, go to the Father. Did he go there as a plan or as a person? They'll say as a person. So I'll say, aha, you got a problem. If he's going there as a person, it says he came from God and is going to God. So if the going to God means he went there as a person, not an idea, that means when he came from God, he came from God as a person, not an idea. He was a person with the Father, his Son, who then became man. And now he's going back as a person, the Son, to the Father from where he came, but with one difference. Now he's going back as a man who's also the Son of God. So they can't get around that when you catch them there. Uh, you know, if if, uh, if Jesus was an idea, and he in the cross he said it's uh, it's completed, it's fully filled, right? So, yeah. uh, why the idea is it still there? I mean, I mean, if the idea, what what is the purpose of this idea to continue? I mean, it's done, it's completed, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand, but again, they're gonna say, well, he's a man, and he accomplished God's purpose, and now God honored him by raising him as a man and exalting him as a man and honoring him as a man to be the Lord of creation. That's what they believe. Yeah. So and He's uh, a man, only a man. He's only a man in heaven, and he's the Lord of creation as a man. That's what they believe. They believe that's all he is. That's, again, idolatry, because mm -hmm. they have a creature, a creature who's there equal to God in power and sovereignty, because he's ruling over all creation as God's equal. So... They're the ones committing shirk. If a Muslim is going to condemn anyone, the Muslims would have to condemn them because that is shirk. Because if he's, is he, if he's a creature, a man, how can a man share God's power and authority and receive the worship that God receives if he's a creature? But they say, yeah, well, because God wanted that to be the case. So to make it clear, do they worship the man Jesus, yet they say he is an idea? They'll say, we worship the man Jesus, who's now a human person, not just an idea, because God wants us to worship him. But mm. the problem, how can God have this man receive the worship that God receives? And how can God have this man, if he's only a man, a creature, ruling on God's throne in heaven as Lord over creation? That is blasphemy. That's idolatry. That's what we call shirk. So, but, I mean, but, but what is but, but what is the purpose? But what is the purpose? You know, when somebody says that because God He wants us to worship Jesus, uh, they they and I mean, what what the purpose? I mean, if if uh, if yeah. God is what need to worship and God is the only God, so why Jesus need to be worshipped? What is the point of this? You See, know? that's the thing. Because the Bible is their enemy, but they don't want to accept the Trinity. They're forced to say, yeah, 
we, we do worship Jesus because God wants us to worship him. But then you ask, why would God want you to worship this creature, this man, the way you worship God when this would be idolatry? They really don't know how to answer that because to them, well, because the Bible says God allowed it. But why would God allow it? Well, because God honored him and exalted him. But why? He's just a man. He's just a creature in your view. They really don't know what to do with that. But because they want to claim to follow the Bible and that they worship the true God and spirit and truth, they're stuck with it. They really don't know what to say. That honestly, they'll tell you, because the Bible says God authorized the worship of Jesus. But why would God have creation worship a creature, a man, if that's all he is? Well, because that's what God wanted. Really? So God wanted idolatry. God wanted a creature to be worshipped the same way he's worshipped. And yet this is not idolatry. This is not the worship of a creature. This is not sin. This does not go against God's law. They'll say no because God allowed it. No, they don't have an answer. Uh, so Sam, like when uh, uh, when they say that Jesus was created in a certain time, which means he wasn't exist before that creation, where, uh, what do you say to them about Jesus' uh, existence? Yes, oh, that's what they believe. Yes, they say. But you're, you're, I'm sorry, you broke up. Say it again. I'm saying when you this, might, when you they, might broke up. Yeah, when when they say that Jesus was not exist until he was born let us say uh, so yes. okay and then jesus he, uh, he says before abraham i am okay so yes. was jesus for them was a man before he come to earth or he was a man no. after he come to earth no see that's the thing uh they, he only became a man and he only came into existence in the womb of his mother when they'll even explain that away they'll say what it means before abraham was i am Meaning, I was already planned by God to come and do what I do. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's what they say. Yeah, but this is very silly, and it's like a, ch a, ch yeah. a child uh, trying to, uh, you know, you answer him, where you get the candy? Why you, yeah. you stole the candy? He says, I found it, you know, in the drawer. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. uh, so how Let's we... Let's that, though. Let's, because you're referring to John 8, 58. I want to help now. I don't want to just keep saying what they say. Mm. We need to refute them for the sake of the Christians. They don't get confused. Now, Go ahead. that's not what they're going to say. They're going to say, when Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I am. They're going to tell you that means before Abraham even came into being, God had already predetermined that the Messiah would come. I am in the sense that my coming was already predetermined by God even before the creation of Abraham. That's how they explain it. Now, let me refute that. Let me show you why this is so silly and a stupid argument because you got to read 56 everyone let's start and read the context so you see why this is a so bad of an argument and in all honesty they're worse than muslims in that muslims will tell you the bible's corrupt and when you show them something that they can't refute they'll say it's corrupt we reject it these people claim to be christians and they honor the god of the bible and believe in the bible but look how they twist the bible and pervert it without shame but let me show you, for the Christians listening, how to use John 8, 58 in the context where Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, let's read 56. Now, guys, listen to how to turn it against them. John 8, 56, Jesus says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Oh, so Abraham saw my day, was glad. So now notice what the Jews ask him, verse 57. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Now, before I finish it, pay attention to what they're asking him. You, you don't even look 50, right? And yet Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years, and you're claiming you saw Abraham? You saw him? Now, notice what Jesus did not say. Jesus didn't say, you guys are stupid. You don't understand what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I saw Abraham. Come on. No, look what he says. Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came into being, I am. In other words, his answer is, yes, I actually saw Abraham and he saw me. I saw him. The reason why I saw him is because unlike Abraham who was created, I was there before Abraham. I was there when Abraham was created. And I was there after Abraham died. And I am here to the present and forever. So that's the answer. Yes, I did see him. And the reason why I could see him, I'm older than 50. 
I was there before Abraham came into being. I was there when he came into being, and I continue to be even after he died. So this cannot be explained away. It cannot be explained to mean that Jesus was simply a plan in God's mind. God predetermined Jesus Messiah would come even before Abraham was created. Because the context is answering the question. You seen Abraham? Yes, I saw him. How? Because before Abraham came to being, I am. I was there already and I saw him. That, my friend, destroys Unitarianism. There's no way around it. Exactly, because if he don't mean what they, uh, you know, I mean, they, they said to him exactly how they understand what he said. He did not say, no, I did not mean that. He says, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham I am. And he is confirming what he just said and what they said, you know. So they did not get it wrong. They get it right. And he did not say, oh, you got me wrong. I did not mean that. You know, he said, yes, I did. So he was there. Abraham, he rejoiced when he see him, when he worship him. He is the God of Abraham. And he exists before Abraham, which means his age, which is the, the, the Jews are talking about, have nothing to do with the existence of Jesus. 100%, 100%. So that right there, if you know how to interpret it, Christian brethren, if you know how to interpret this passage, it destroys Unitarianism because Jesus is claiming, I actually saw Abraham. I saw him face to face. And I saw his reaction when he got happy to see my day. And the reason why I saw him is because unlike Abraham who's created, I've always been. I'm yeah. much older than 50. There's no way around this. They're going to tap dance like Muslims do, but there's no way around this. If you know how to interpret this passage. Uh, Sam, according to those people, is Jesus equal to God? Uh, well, no, because he's just a man. He's a creature okay. that God created. He can't be equal to God, which is why it's idolatry when you say God then authorized and allowed all creatures to worship this man. Because now... He's making him equal in his worship. Why? And isn't this idolatry? You see the problem? Hey, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So people understand what I'm saying. That in this view, the Unitarians are idolaters. So Muslims, if you want to attack anyone for shirk, you attack them. They're committing shirk because they're agreeing with you. Jesus is just a man. That's all he is. So they're agreeing with you, Muslims. But they're saying this man is being worshipped the same way God is being worshipped. And I'll prove it. Just one verse in the Bible. Revelation 5.13. Revelation 5.13. Here is the proof that Jesus, whom the Unitarians say is just a man. That's all he is. He's a man in heaven. Is worshipped by every creature the same way God is. In Revelation 5.13. I'll read it here. And every created thing. Guys, pay attention to the language. Every created thing which is in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, and all things in them. Now, let me focus on this passage. I don't want to rush through this. Guys, John literally exhausts the language. He doesn't just say every created thing and stop. So you get the point. Every creature that's in heaven, even on earth, under the earth, in the sea, all things in them. He's telling you every creature in all creation. He doesn't exclude anyone. He doesn't even exclude himself. Every creature in the entire creation saying what? To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion for how long? Forever and ever. So guys, see what John just said. Every creature in all of creation will eventually give to the Lamb, Jesus, the same <clears throat> blessing, honor, and glory and dominion they give to God the Father Almighty forever and ever. Now, you have a problem if you're a Unitarian. You have a problem if you're a Unitarian. If Jesus is just a man, how is it every creature in all existence is given this creature the same worship God the Father receives forever? That's the first problem. That's idolatry. That's what Muslims would call shirk. The second problem, the second problem, if Jesus is a creature... How is it John separates him from every created thing? Notice, he says, every creature in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, in the seas, all things in them, 
are on one side and the lamb is not part of creation. He's not part of them. He's separate from them. He's on the side of God. How could that be possible? How could Jesus be separate from every created thing if he himself is a creation? You see the contradiction? Exactly. And in the same time, uh, you know, when, when those people, they, they come with an idea and they try to promote it, uh, uh, I don't see that they have any, any logic. It's just, uh, I mean, like somebody, he says something and he don't need to prove it. You know, he just uh, follow it and he claim it. Uh, when you yeah. say that every creature, that's mean every creature. And look, it says not only in earth, it says in heaven and in earth, right? So yep. whatever is created, so if they can, if they say, okay, Jesus was in heaven, well, it says every creature which is in heaven. So if Jesus yep. is included, he should, he should, you know, it should be there. I mean, between those creatures, but he is not. They are, they are worshiping him. They are honoring him. And yep. he is not honoring them, you know. And, and what about uh, uh, Sam? Uh, I know that you have the idea in your head to follow, but as long as we are talking about honoring, what about yes. the father he honored the son? What they do with that? Oh, th that's another one they have to tap dance uh, because they're going to have to tell you the father is honoring a creature. Hmm. The honor that the father gives to Jesus is the honor that belongs to God alone. What do I mean? Guys, what you do is you take these Unitarian heretics to Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12, because this is a nightmare for them if you know how to explain it. If you know how to explain it, a nightmare for them. Why? Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12. We're going to walk through this. And guys, sorry for the noise. My, I guess uh, the it's same okay. guy who was mowing CP's lawn is mowing my lawn. You sent them here. It's a miracle. Right? <laughs> All right. It's a miracle, man. You are a prophet. You're more of a prophet. <laughs> do All miracles, right. brother. All right. Do it. Okay, now Hebrews 1. Guys, notice God the Father. You got to pay attention. It's all about paying attention to the Bible. If the Christians, our brothers and sisters, pay attention, they'll destroy Unitarianism, Islam, and all these other false views. It's just paying attention to what you read. In Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12, if you read the context, it's the Father praising the Son, glorifying the Son. Now notice how he glorifies the Son. Notice how he glorifies the Son. Okay, why don't you pay attention? In Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12. But of the Son, he says, he meaning the Father. The Father says to the Son, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of his, of his kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, because Jesus became man, the Father became his God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. But that's not the part I want you to focus on where the Father glorifies Jesus as the God who rules forever. Here's the part I want you to focus on. Notice what the Father says to the Son. Guys, pay attention to this one. And this is continuing the conversation. What does the Father say to the Son? Notice the Father speaking to the Son. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They all will become old like a garment, and like a mantle, you will roll them up like a garment. They will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. Let me repeat. The Father just said to his Son, You are the Lord who in the beginning, this is Genesis, You, my Son, are the Lord who in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands, my Son. They will perish, but you remain. They will all become... <coughs> Old like a garment, like a mantle, you, my son, will roll them up like a garment. They will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. Now, here's why this is amazing, CP. Mm. This is a quotation. This is a quotation of Psalm 102, Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27, where the psalmist is glorifying Yahweh. He's glorifying Jehovah God. And here's what he says to Jehovah. Psalm 102, 25, 27. Of old, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Even they will perish, but you endure, and all of them will wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. Now, folks, be blown away. The Father takes the words of Psalm 102, 
a psalm about Jehovah God Almighty creating the heavens and the earth at the beginning and he applies it to the sun, glorifies the sun and praises the sun saying, you are that Yahweh, you are that Jehovah who at the beginning made the heavens and the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. You roll them up and unlike creation, you, my son, remain the same and your years never end. So number one, this shows that Jesus was there before creation. Number two, he's the God of creation who created everything. Number three, the Father is praising him as Yahweh God, the creator. Uh, Sam, there, are there those people different? Somebody posting a question saying, uh, uh, could you please ask Sam about uh, Sabellianism? Are, yes, the, are, yeah. they, are they both the same? No, Sabellianism is the Father appears as Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is his human nature, and then he appears as the Holy Spirit. So it's one person playing uh, like playing three roles. Like you're an actor, right? You mm -hmm. are an actor in a movie. Okay. And in one scene, you play a cop. Another scene, you play the mayor. Another scene, you play a murderer. Mm -hmm. But it's still you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they don't believe Jesus, Jesus as the Son was there before creation with the Father in fellowship with the Father. They don't believe that. But they don't believe... It's it's similar to Unitarianism, but not the same, because they believe Jesus, the man, is the Father in the flesh. Meaning God the Father wasn't there before creation with His Son, His Word. His mm -hmm. Word is not a different person who's there with Him, having the same nature. The Father... <clears throat> is Jesus and that Jesus is the human nature of the Father. So let, let, let us say the Father, he is the Father in, in one scene, in different scene, he is Jesus. Yes, and another scene is the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So like you go to the bedroom, he changed the form, you yeah. come back yeah. in different person and okay. Yeah, well, this yeah, is this is very, yeah. actually, this is very silly idea because all the, actually all the verses you quoted uh, about uh, uh, Jesus existence, Jesus nature, Jesus holiness, Jesus uh, being honored, uh, uh, God and the throne, etc. All of them, they say clearly that there is two exist in the same yeah. time. You know, it's not one. You know, from because from the beginning he is there. It's not like okay, you know, when 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 the father he honored the son. If the father is the same as the son, it's just a person changing his uh, format. Then how he honor that format? I mean, it's the same. It's yeah. a, if it's the same, the same person. I mean, that would be silly. It's like uh, I stand in front of the mirror and say, "Okay, I honor myself now." Okay, so it doesn't uh, really uh, make too yeah, much. In fact, see, just here in Hebrews one ten to twelve, is the father talking to himself when he says to the son, "In the beginning, Lord, you laid the." Well, I thought the father is the son because the son is the human nature of the father. So who is he talking to? Yeah. No, it doesn't make sense. So we notice that all those people, they have a silly uh, ideas. And obviously, uh, you know, uh, all those cults, they share one thing. Uh, we have we have no proof of what we say, but we are going to say it. The same as the Muhammadan, you know. Uh, Muhammad, he went to the seven sky and the top of a flying donkey. Yet even his wife, she said he was sleeping next to me. He did not move. Uh, well, yeah. What is the proof of what you say? No proof. And for them, all the Bible is against them. Not a single verse in the Bible is saying what they are saying. Yet they yep. they come with the cult. And uh, 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 it's amazing how somebody, uh, what do you think behind that somebody believe in those cults? I mean, is that because we are ignorant somehow? Well, here's the thing. How many Christians who say they believe in the Trinity know what the Trinity is and ex can explain it, right? If, mm -hmm. I, go, if <laughs> I go to a church that's uh, supposed to be Trinitarian, huh. And if I start asking him questions about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you're going to see they're going to end up sounding like these civilians, mm -hmm. right? So because there's a lot of ignorance among our Christian brothers and sisters about the Bible teaching. That's why they have to learn what the Bible says about these doctrines so they don't be confused. So if Trinitarians are confused about the Trinity, why should I expect these heretics to, to know the Trinity, right? But, I what, mean, but why they are, exp uh, I, I think they, they are uh, confused because we don't have enough education in our churches. Our yes. churches became a, a place of uh, uh, ritual so, and uh, worship, like a statement. Where, uh, even the priest, he don't even, uh, he's not really a priest. He have a book uh, and the book is telling him what the, what the topic he will talk about today. And he read from that book, it's a book made by somebody. He's not even read the, the Bible no more. You know, yeah. they have a book for sermon, you know, 
and uh, priest became a job. I mean, uh, if you go right now online to Career Builder, you can search for a priest. You know, you can post a job as a priest, and then a church hire you. So it is not really as it used to be. Now it uh, somehow it became a job. It became a career, and the, the career you don't have really to know as much as you, you know how to do the rituals or let us say stand up pray wave your hand to Jesus but the second we ask you a question you don't know what to say and this is why we Christians we need education 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 uh, 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 Sam what uh, what the Lord he said about education in the Bible say it again because uh, what, your what, voice cut off what the Bible says about education did the, the, did the Bible order us like when Jesus said search the, the books did he yes. order us? In fact, Jesus said, this is eternal life, that you know, know the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you sent. You have to know who God is. You have to grow in your understanding of God and your love for God and your worship of God. Well, you can't get to know God and grow in your love and understanding of God if you don't read the Bible, because the Bible is God's revelation of himself to us. And even Jesus himself said, that unless you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. In John 8, 24, he goes, if you don't believe I am, you shall die in your sins. I am what? So this is why Jesus says, you need to know who he is. You need to know what he's done. And you need to fall in love with the real Jesus, not the Jesus of your own imagination. Well, the only way you can do that is by going to the Bible and studying what God says about himself in the Bible. Because Paul warns, and I want to give this warning to everyone. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, we're going to read verses 1 to 4. Paul warns, warns the Christians, and we use this for Muhammad in a way, but it's actually, he's referring to those who claim to be Christian. Because at the time of Paul, there are people who claim to be Christian, but were teaching a false message. And Paul is saying, be careful of them. They claim to be followers of Christ, but they're not. Now, let me read it for you. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 1 of 4. Notice his warning. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 of 4. I wish that you would bear with me a little foolishness. But indeed, you are bearing with me. You're putting up with me in correcting you and rebuking you in this letter for the things you're doing. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. Why? For I engaged you to one husband, betrothed you to one husband. See, now, let me break this down real quickly for the Christians here. Paul is describing the Corinthian believers as his daughter, his spiritual virgin daughter, and he, their spiritual father, who preached the gospel, got them saved. And he goes, being my spiritual daughter, I already in got you engaged to one husband, Christ, and I want to present you as a pure virgin. He's talking about spiritual virginity. It's not physical sex. It's spiritual because we are the bride of Christ. Our relationship is spiritual. So he's saying, you are my virgin daughter. And I engaged you to Christ, so I want you to remain a spiritual virgin. Do not defy yourself spiritually, so when Christ comes, you are a spiritual virgin. Well, you may ask the question, how can a Christian defile himself spiritually, lose his spiritual virginity? Here's how. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity to Christ. For if one comes, someone comes and preaches another Jesus, like the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Unitarians, Sibylians, another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. See, this is his warning. You know how you Christians lose your spiritual virginity? By letting your minds being seduced spiritually by Satan. How does Satan seduce your mind? by bringing you someone who'll preach another Jesus, like the Unitarians, or the Muslims, or the Mormons, and you accept it. When you do, then you're allowing Satan to seduce you, and you're no longer a spiritual virgin. So Paul is saying, be careful. So this is why you gotta know who the right Jesus is, you gotta have the right spirit, and know the right gospel. You don't, then you're gonna fall for the Unitarian Jesus, the Muslim Jesus, the Mormon Jesus, the Jehovah Witness Jesus and lose your spiritual virginity. You got to be careful. So the Bible make it clear for those who asked me the question before that those people are no Christians. So don't no. don't don't be fooled by them. They say we worship him. It doesn't matter. Even if they worship him, still they are no Christian and they are going to go to hell. As simple as yeah. that. You know. 
So, and let, and let, and to confirm what you're saying, CP, just let me read the same chapter, verses 13 and 15, just to confirm what you said. <clears throat> they're going to claim to be Christian. They're no Christian. They're, they're tools of the devil. In 2 Corinthians 11, same chapter, 13 and 15, notice what he says. 13 and 15, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. You get right there. So simply, this is the same as Muhammad, a false man. But, uh, you know, he, he was not successful to take all of us. So uh, some, like many of us, are still left standing for the faith. So he tried to come to us. He changed his skin. He changed his format. He changed the idea. But uh, all of them, they have the same. It's different Jesus, different gospel, different uh, scriptures. And they use the same name. All of them, you notice, uh, 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 Sam, that Muhammad, uh, in order to deceive us, he did not say there is nobody, his name is Jesus, or uh, Mary is not a virgin. No. So he took ideas, which is true ideas from the Bible, in order to fool us with his false ideas. And all of them, they share the same. They use the reality to bring deception, you know. So all of them, in order, it's like a trap, you know, like a, a, you, uh, you put the seed for a bird to capture the, the bird. But not because you are feeding the bird, you want to eat the bird. You know, so what do you do? You sacrifice the seed, and the seed are good. So the seed of Christianity is in the Bible. Some, many of them, they use it to trap you to something else. Using the good name of God, using the good name of Christ, using the good word of the Bible, and they try to manipulate them and make them sound totally different, far away from what they are. And you are going to be the victim for sure if you are a person who know not your book. So, uh, uh, so uh, that's mean, uh, Sam. Uh, we as a Christians, we have a duty. Uh, is, you know, to be Christian is not just to wave your hand to Jesus and pray to Jesus. Okay, well, thank you very much. But shouldn't you know first who is Jesus before you pray for him? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, Go ahead, brother. And how and how we can do that? We know, we know why the why the churches, Sam, they don't make a class to teach people how to refute people. Why they don't do that? I wish they did. I don't know. I but, wish they like, think it's like you, you, you were a child, and I was a child one day, and we went to the church. We never heard the priest. I never, ever heard the priest giving me an answer about something I've been asked outside. All what they do is ritual things, uh, normal service, repeated service, and you, they, they, they never share education. So how a Christian child, he can receive education if those who they are supposedly in charge, and they call themselves a priest, they don't do that. Where they where they can find the, the, the education? This is why what uh, what someone like Sam is doing, you know, uh, is extremely important because you cannot find the answer with the priest because m many of them they are false. They have no idea what they are talking about. They are just doing a business. The same as Muhammad. They are a fraud like Muhammad actually. Many of them, you know. Be aware, you know, be aware of false teachers. Yeah. So there's false teachers who they are coming just to take money from you to get paid. And all what they care for is having a nice house. They preach you about the poor, and then yet they have they, they, they will they, they negotiate with the church about how much they will get paid for their fee. So, uh, uh, Sam, now yes, sir. Uh, uh, when those people they come to us with their ideas, what is yes. the major point you, you you ask like you tell the Christians to do step by step in order? Doesn't matter who, like let's say. Uh, the Unitarian, Mohammedan, yep. Jehovah's Witnesses. So as a Christian, when he faced those people, what the first things he need to do in order to be able to refute them? How before, he, brother, even before they refute Joe's Witnesses, <clears throat> and, I, and you said it, and I'm going to repeat it again to confirm. Folks, do you know, if you know your faith, and you know what the Bible teaches about your faith, you'll be ready for any, any of them? What do I mean? If I know what the Bible says about the Trinity, even though I may not know much about the Unitarians, the moment they say something about Jesus that's wrong, I'll know they're wrong because I know what the Bible says about Jesus, right? If they tell me, Jesus is just a man. Oh, oh, okay, so you're a heretic because he's more than a man. Jesus didn't exist before he entered Mary's womb. See, you don't need to know in depth what these groups all believe 
As long as you know your faith first, you know what your faith is all about and why you believe it on the basis of the Bible, then when someone comes and says something that doesn't agree with the Bible, you're going to know it doesn't agree with the Bible because you know the Bible. So like Unitarianism. <clears throat> I didn't know much about Unitarians, and I still don't know too much because I can't study all the religions. It's like CP. He's the master of Islam to destroy Islam, the best by the grace of God. The Lord has made him the best for the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men. But if CP didn't spend his time focusing on Islam, but he spent his time just studying a little bit about this religion, that religion, then he couldn't be an expert on Islam. It's not possible for a human being who doesn't know everything to be a master of all these different religions and cults. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be possible. So number one, specialize on what you believe. What am I supposed to believe? Well, I have to believe in the Trinity. Why? Because the Bible teaches, teaches where? What am I supposed to believe about Jesus? What am I supposed to believe about the Holy Spirit? What am I supposed to believe about salvation and the Bible? Learn the basics of your faith. Know why you believe these things. Know where the Bible teaches them. Master that. And then God put in your heart, go reach these different groups and then specialize in one particular group. Like for example, my focus has been Jehovah's Witnesses and Islam, not Unitarians or this civilian group. But because I know the Trinity, I can debate a Unitarian civilian on the Trinity, even though I don't know much about their religion, because they're attacking the Trinity. I know the Trinity, so I don't have to know too much about them to show they're wrong about the Trinity. Get to know your faith. Get to know why you believe Jesus is God, who became man. Why you believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit were there together before creation. Why you believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit are the one God who created everything. Get to know your faith from the Bible, and that will take care of 90% of the problems you face. 90% of the problems from the cults you're going to be able to address. That 10% is just know what makes the Unitarian different from a Jehovah's Witness. But 90% of the attacks you already know how to refute if you just know your faith. It's simple. Know your faith. It's like, you know, a mechanic uh, and he need to fix his car. So he go to other mechanic and then the other mechanic, he want to fool you and he want to make you pay more. But because you are a mechanic, you know exactly what he is saying is true or it's not when he is going to charge you. So before we go and try to fix other people, what about we learn how to be a mechanic who knew every part of, of, the, uh, of what he have, in this case is the Bible, and then when, uh, when somebody come with the lies, we knew it's a lie because we knew all the book and we study it very well. Now, uh, uh, this is happening to me every day, uh, uh, Sam. You know, uh, people, they call me from different beliefs, etc. And I spoke to all kinds of people. But uh, even the one, like somebody in, in the chat, he was saying, Christian Prince, he attacked the Hindus. And now, but the Hindus now are the most rich people in the world. And this is, this is showing, showing you how silly, stupid a human being can be. So if you are the most rich person, person in the world, that make you right? Well, that's mean Bill Gates is the, the, he's, he's the most right person, you know, so you should worship him too. So people are silly, people are shallow. And sometimes, like, uh, sometimes I use the word, like certain words, which is kind of insulting, right? Like I say, like somebody thinking like a donkey, but actually I'm insulting donkeys because donkeys yeah. don't say what they say, what those people say. I mean, you have to be a person so shallow, so silly, to say what you just say. What being rich have to do with being right? I can say the same argument because most 99.9 .9 of the Hindus are, are poor. So you are telling me few of you became rich and that proven that Hinduism is right? I mean, your logic is against you. So we need to learn the logic of the fool and use, use it against them, not necessarily the religion, which means use God, he gave you a gift. It's called the brain. If you don't use that brain, it's your it's your it's your mistake he gave you a lot of power actually he he supported you by by the holy spirit he gave you a book which is the most powerful book ever and then he he taught you okay i am giving you a gift use it so when a shallow when a person is shallow you have to be deep how you can be deep expose his shallowness and sh show him from the bible what, what what the bible is teaching now yep. uh, uh, sam uh, what you said about we, there's no way we can, we can know all religion in the world. This is absolutely true. Like in India, they worship rats. I mean, this is very silly. But what you can what you can say? Uh, I have a I have a question uh, about Hebrew <clears throat> uh, Hebrew one. 
the Hebrew question the question saying that uh, I have a question about Hebrew 1 8 to 11 he, yes. <coughs> he mentioned which mean you <clears throat> uh, the question saying don't Jehovah's Witnesses consider it and uh, uh, like uh, uh, in Hebrew refers to God uh, praising the Son, but Jehovah's Witnesses witness refer to this, to the Son praising the Father. Do we have any proof of this passage or other to confirm that this verse say that it is the Father he is uh, here speaking of the Son? I, I have no idea what he means talking about because no Jehovah's Witness denies it's the Father speaking to the Son. So I don't know if he <laughs> wants to... Uh, <clears throat> explain himself because if he's saying that then he's not really knowledgeable about Jehovah's Witnesses. There is no Jehovah Witness that says that it's not the Father speaking to the Son. Why? All you need to do re is read verse 5 and it says, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I've begotten you, or I will be a father to him, he'll be a son to me. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the inhabited earth, he says, let all God's angels, <clears throat> now in their translation says, give him obeisance, worship him. And he makes his angels, <clears throat> it says, his, his ministers, angels, winds and ministers, flames of fire. So no Jehovah Witness, no Jehovah Witness says, this is not God the Father speaking about the Son and to the Son. They right. don't say that. They try to explain it away, that it doesn't mean that Jesus is God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But there is no Jehovah Witness on the planet, if he's a knowledgeable Jehovah Witness, that says that's not the Father speaking to the Son. How can it be the Father speaking to the Son when the context of Hebrews is trying to show that the Son is superior to angels? And here's how he's superior. Look what the Father says about the Son. Look how the Father glorifies the Son. He says things about the Son, glorifies the Son that he says about no angel. That's the context. Just read it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sam, I noticed too that Jehovah's Witnesses, they themselves didn't, I mean, they, uh, they go in the street, supposedly they want to teach people, but you will notice that every one of, of them, he have different kind of Jehovah's Witnesses, and this is showing you that this cult is really, uh, I mean, it's not established really. Few of them, they knew what Jehovah's Witnesses, the rest is just uh, uh, like a display in the street to attract people. Uh, uh, yeah, well, the question, the, the person who gave me the question said that he heard or she heard that Jehovah's Witnesses, they say that. So they, she, she or he heard that uh, that way they describe it. This is what I'm saying to you, that each one of them, he have his own statement, but it's not really the official Jehovah's Witnesses, correct, uh, Sam? This, no. is, not, this yeah. is not the official belief. Yeah, you go to JW.org, their website. Yeah. Their official position is, because it's Hebrews 1, they can't deny it. They can't say it's not the Father speaking to the Son. God is speaking to the Son. And this is what he's saying to the Son. And here's further proof. In verse 13 of Hebrews 1, 13, is that Jesus talking to the Father saying, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Hmm. Yeah. Right? The very next verse. It yeah. says, and to which of the angels did he ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's God speaking to the Son. And the point of Hebrews is, God never said this to any angel. God never said to an angel, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. He only said that to the Son. So there is no Joe witness who knows his faith, as false as it is, that will say, no, this is the Son glorifying the Father. So the Son is saying to the Father, Father, sit at my right hand until... No, the Son sits at the Father's right hand, and that's proven in Hebrews 1.3. It says, after he made purification for our sins, he then sat at the right hand of the majesty on high. I mean to that. You know, uh, there is a Hindu person, the, the Hindus are very upset from me. I don't care, my friend. Uh, why yeah. Christian Prince is upset from Hindus, uh, he's jealous from the Hindus. My friend, I'm so jealous from you, because you are sleeping in the street, and you have no food, and you are the most poor country in the world. And, uh, you know, I mean, and, and you are desperate to come to America. And I'm jealous from you. I mean, I mean, you are silly and you are you are a shallow. Uh, you actually you're your person. Uh, you are disrespectful for your own people. You are insulting your people to be jealous, my friend, to be jealous. Uh, me as a Christian, uh, uh, I, I will be jealous if you are a true believer. 
I will be jealous if you are better than me and you do good fruits. I will be jealous, which means my jealousy will be for good, not for bad. We will be jealous. We will be in competition like now. I want to compete with Brother Sam about how many people he can bring to Christ, how many people he will bring, and how many people he will bring, because all of us then, we will be good fruits of the Lord. This is what the Christians, when they get jealous, they are. They are not jealous in a bad way. We are jealous to serve the Lord. So we want to fight for the Lord to bring people and save them. We are the firefighters who jump in the fire. So Sam, he jumped in the fire. He saved five. I, okay, I will do my best to save six and seven and eight. So this is how our jealousy translated as a Christians. But because you are shallow and you worship rats, you are coming to us and talking about jealousy. Go and worship rats. Have you ever heard of a religion? Have a temple of the rats? Go worship them. Rat worshiper. I mean, the Muslim, they kiss a black stone in the shape of a private part of a woman, and you are worshiping a rat, and you think that you are better than the Muslims. You are not. You are not. Both of you are silly. Both of you, you have no God. Both of you are pagan. Both of you are idol worshippers. Both of you, you have a, a, a stone for sex. Both of you, 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 you worship, uh, 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 you believe God is, uh, you don't know even what God is. I mean, if we ask a Muslim, who is Allah? You have no idea. He says the creator. I did not ask you what he do for a living. I'm asking you, who is your Allah? You don't know. All of you are the same. You have your your high priest, he said, the guru. You have 36 million God. I mean, I want you to ship them all to me in the meal so I can talk to them. Uh, uh, Sam, yes, you know me, this is how I talk. I mean, what, what we can, no, we can, what we can do. I'm a straightforward answer. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Sam, when, when those people, they try to fool us, about uh, Jesus is not uh, a God who exists from the beginning. Uh, what is the purpose of this? Uh, it's demonic, obviously, because if Jesus existed before creation as God's eternal word, his son, who is one with him, uh, they're one God, then what's the problem? Why can't you let Jesus be who he is? Well, it's because you see there is a demonic influence in the world, and Christians must believe this. If you believe the Bible, you believe this. Satan and his kingdom of darkness are working day and night because they don't sleep to mislead people from the true God, to destroy, destroy their lives by damning them to hell by following a false gospel, a false Jesus. So what's the purpose? Well, they think, in their mind, they're being faithful to the Bible. They think they're interpreting the Bible correctly. They think they're honest to the Bible and that Jesus is just a man. And yet, no matter how many passages you show, he's got to be more than a man or you're going to make Jesus <clears throat> into an idol and you're going to blame God for being an idolater, for exalting, exalting a human creature to his level to receive his worship from all creation. No matter how much you try to show them, they will argue with you, debate you, and refute you trying to prove you're wrong and they're right because they're under demonic influence. And the only way they can be set free is ask the Holy Spirit to break that demonic chain and allow them to see who Jesus is and accept Jesus as he is. And it's happened. There have been Unitarians who have left because these verses bothered them. These verses where Jesus is giving, given the worship that only God is supposed to receive. Jesus is on the throne of God in heaven ruling as Lord of all creation, even though you can't have any other Lord in heaven over you except the one true God. These passages has been used by the Spirit to trouble these people to leave their lie and embrace the true God. So it's happening. They're coming to the truth. But why? Well, because in their mind, in their mind, they're being honest to the Bible. Like the Joe's Witness thinks, he's being honest to the Bible. She's being honest to the Bible. And we're the ones who perverted the Bible because of our counsels. So this is why, again, I want to say it like a broken record. I'll give them another line of evidence a little later, mm -hmm. how you can prove Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. But this is why I'm saying to the Christians here, it's not going to be enough to quote the councils like the Council of Nicaea or the Council of Constantinople for these people or to quote the early church fathers. They'll say, yeah, these church fathers were heretics, used of the devil to pervert the faith. Give us the Bible. They want you to show from the Bible. And even when you show them from the Bible, they're still going to argue against you. But at least you're showing them that your faith is based in the Bible and you can show them from the Bible. You have the truth and they're perverting the Bible. You have to know your Bible. You have to know it. You exactly. have no choice. Exactly. Uh, somebody is asking a question, which I find weird. I mean, 
uh, all what we are talking about here is about the Trinity and then the question is I will put it on the screen for and I will read it for you Sam I, I don't know if you can see the chat uh, uh, a lady her name is Sarah Said uh, Shamonian uh, Sam do you think the Father uh, one plus Jesus plus Holy Spirit is equal to three different person uh, but one or the Father is equal equal Jesus equal Holy Spirit equal to one person what do you think yes yeah, the second view that she's saying, that's the Sabellianism, Sabellianism, that mm -hmm. oneness heresy we're talking about. If you read the scripture, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father, because they love one another, they have fellowship with one another, and one sends the others, mm -hmm. but they are not three gods. So even the term person, people get confused. If you don't know what the term person means, you're going to think we're saying, the Father is a human being who has flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit is a human being who has flesh and blood. No, by person, because he, in the Arabic word, it would be aqanim, right? The word aqanim. But in English, when we use the word person, we mean the Father has a mind. He has intelligence. He has wisdom. He has knowledge. He has a will. He has desires, emotions. He loves. He can get angry. He, he, he can pour out his wrath. So that's what we mean when we say the Father is a person. I'm not saying person like you and me, flesh and blood. That's what we mean when we say the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit has a mind, and I can prove that from Scripture. The Father knows the mind of the Spirit, and the Spirit knows the will of, of God. I can show that in a minute. The Holy Spirit has a mind. He has emotions, meaning he loves, right? He speaks, can be spoken to, right? Because he intercedes for us, right? <clears throat> he has a will, and he knows the will of God. That's what we mean by person. So if you let the Bible speak, the Father is a person, the Son is a person, the Holy Spirit is a person. They love one another. They speak to one another. They have fellowship with one another. One sends the others, like the Father sends the Son and the Spirit, and the Father and the Son send the Spirit. So they can't be the same person. They must be three persons who are one God. One God, their nature is one. So I don't want you to get confused on the word person, because some people think, oh, oh, person, you mean he's like me, a flesh of, no, no. Jesus did become human. He became a man from his blessed mother. But we're talking about Jesus as God, as the word of the Father, as the son of the Father, who was there before creation, as the word, as the son, before he became man, he is a person in the sense that he has a mind, he speaks to the Father, the Father speaks to him. He loves the Father, the Father loves him. The Father sends him. The Father's not sending himself. So that's what we mean. You know, Sam, when, uh, when Jesus got baptism, there's a story there can can give us more explanation about who is Jesus. Uh, you know, when Jesus got baptism, what happened? Yeah, well, there, the Spirit comes down in the shape of a dove, mm -hmm. and John the Baptist sees the Spirit, so that means the Spirit is not Jesus. Okay. Because you can't say Jesus is coming down on himself in a different manifestation. Correct. The Spirit has to be someone different from Jesus. But then a voice from heaven that John himself heard audibly saying, You are my son, my beloved, my beloved son, the son whom I love, with whom I will please. That's not Jesus speaking from heaven to himself in a different manifestation. So right there, that's the Father speaking to the Son about the Son, showing the Father is not the Son. And the Father is not the Spirit, because the Spirit comes down from the Father in the shape of a dove, and he rests on Jesus, showing that the Spirit is not Jesus. What else do you want? Uh, you know, uh, Sam, here I notice that the Holy Spirit came, and we, uh, I think all of us, we heard Sam saying, that came in a form of a bird, correct? Yes. Okay. Dove, so yes, now, a dove. Okay, dove, yeah. So, but, but well, what, we, what we see now, that Jesus is in the form of a man, Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and voices coming from heaven. So in this image alone, we have two physical images. One is for yep. a dove, and one is for a Christ. And the one we did not see the physical form of is the voice, which is the Father. But here you yep. notice that all the, the garbage they come to us with is destroyed by, the, by this statement everything because simply Jesus is not the bird correct Jesus is not is not the bird and the bird is a physical form 
And yet, this bird is a spirit, which means the spirit, the Holy Spirit, can come to us in a format or in a form of a uh, subject. But still, it is a spirit. It still can be invisible. It still can be everywhere. It still can be with us. And this is what Jesus says too. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between you. But Jesus have a form. How he can do that? He have a flesh of a body. In order to be everywhere, you have to be way more powerful than the flesh of a man. Because the flesh of a man, he cannot do that. It's impossible. I cannot be in China. There's two Christians now speaking about me. In the same, I am in, in, in USA. Some and uh, a Christian prince talking about me in the same time. That is impossible. That is the power of God. So we need to understand that being in the flesh of a person, even or the flesh of a, of a dove, does not lower the, the power of the person. God, he humbled himself, and he come to us in the flesh of a man. But when he humbled himself, he did not lose his nature as God. Exactly. He's still God. So the dove still was the Holy Spirit. Correct? Yeah, 100%. Even yeah. though it's a dove. We saw a dove. We did not see, uh, you know, we did not see really anything, uh, you know, I mean, different from a dove. But still, those verses, and I say thanks to the Lord, that those verses are existed so it's like those verses are made to shut up all those liars they are made they are designed actually to shut up those liars and this is why we say we need to learn before we open our mouth otherwise you will speak like a fool and this is what's happening to them we are laughing at them now they speak as foolishness and we laugh at their foolishness and the world want to believe in such a garbage they come to us with because it's a foolishness so be wise and at the same time, the Lord, he says, be holy. Be holy like your father. So, uh, Sam, what else you want to add to all the things you said to us to help the Christians yeah. to refute those people? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one final point that should destroy Unitarianism, that proves Jesus is the God of the Old Testament, but to also confirm what CP said. In Matthew 17, 5, the Father appeared in a cloud. In a cloud. Because in Matthew 17, 5, guys, notice this. Matthew 17, 5, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud said this is my beloved son with whom i will please listen to him so guys here's an isn't it amazing god the father will manifest the cloud and that cloud is a sign that god's <clears throat> presence is with you and then they heard the voice audibly so here you have the father manifesting in a cloud god is not a cloud by nature obviously but that cloud was a sign the father's presence is with you jesus is a man and the holy spirit appears as a dove and then the father in that cloud they hear his voice saying this one this man who's now shining in front of you it's more than a man he is my son whom i love you better listen to him what else do you guys want you know right? uh, you know sam uh, this is remind me of the story of uh, moshe or, or moses uh, yeah when, exactly. when when god he appeared to him in the uh, in the in the bushes as a fire right yeah. Okay, but, and but, that, but but God came down in a cloud to Moses too on Mount Sinai. Correct. So uh, if if Jesus was an idea and he is sent down to the earth and he is exists from the beginning of an idea came with the creation. So why God is coming in the? I mean, and, you know, I mean, if they are saying that Jesus is the one who do the idea, the plan, right? So just, okay, yeah. why God, the Father, is coming down? speaking to Mo to moses in the bushes is it didn't they say this just uh, he sent jesus he's the idea he's the plan yeah that's it he's uh, jesus that wasn't there he's just the plan of god that becomes a reality in jesus that's what they say so what, yeah, we, but... what we notice right away that they are, they are speaking foolishness and the, the, the foolishness only can be uh, wise for us if we are fool if we are ignorant yeah so this is why I'm going to now give them the final argument. Guys, Quiet. if you learned this argument, I used this argument against the Unitarian. He did not answer. Here is the destruction of Unitarianism. Just if there's one argument, remember, remember John 118. Let me explain it to you how you use it. John 118, guys, just notice what it says. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, begotten Son, who's in the bosom of the Father has explained him. Now, this is what you asked the Unitarian. Here it says, God has not been seen or understood at any time. Does this include the time of Moses and Isaiah and Abraham? They'll say yes. But now notice what it says. The only begotten son, begotten God, who's in the bosom of the Father, he has explained them. So what John is saying is, 
The only way anyone can know who God is or even see God is if the Son appears and reveals God to you and allows you to see God. If he doesn't, you can't see God. And it's saying at any time. That means whenever someone has seen God or heard from God, that's because Jesus the Son is revealing God to that person. Now, this is what you do. You say, okay, now you have a problem. Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. Remember, if anyone has seen God at any time, that's because Jesus must have been there revealing God to them and allowing them to know God and see God, unless you believe John is contradicting the Old Testament. So then you, go, then you tell them, okay, my friend, explain Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. I'm going to give you several examples. Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Exodus 24, verses 9, and 11, 9 to 11, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. And under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, as clear as the sky itself, yet he did not stretch out his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel. They saw God, and they ate and drank. That was example number one, Exodus 24, verses 9 11. They saw the God of Israel. Example number two, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. Example number two, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filled with smoke. Now notice verse 5, what Isaiah says. Verse 5, Isaiah 6, verse 5. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes, my own physical eyes, have seen the King, Yahweh of hosts. I have seen with my eyes the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. That's example number two. I'll give you two more examples to see how to connect it with Jesus. Amos chapter 9, verse 1. Amos chapter 9, verse 1. The book of Amos chapter 9, verse 1. I saw the Lord standing, God standing beside the altar, and he said, smite the capitals so that the thresholds <clears throat> will shake and break them on the heads of them all. Then I will slay the rest of them with the sword. They will not have a fugitive who will flee or a refuge who will escape. That was the third example. Now the final example. I can give you more, but for the sake of time. Final example, 1 Kings 22, verses 19 to 23, but I'm just going to read 19. 1 Kings 22, Verses 19 to 23, but I'll just read 19. Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting. So like Isaiah, he sees the Lord in a shape, in a visible shape, sitting on a visible throne. Even though God is shapeless, he can appear in a shape. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. Now, folks, you tell the Unitarian. John 1 18 says, no one has seen God at any time. That means Isaiah's time, Micaiah's time, Moses' time, they could not see God. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father has revealed him. Meaning, if Moses saw God, if Isaiah saw God, Micaiah saw God, Amos saw God, they could only see God if Jesus the Son was there revealing God to them because John says, no one at any time could ever see God unless Jesus, who's in the heart of God, reveals him. So who was revealing God to them at the time of Moses? Isaiah, Micaiah. It had to be Jesus. But if it was Jesus, that means he was there, alive, appearing as God before he became man. You can't get around this if you're a Unitarian unless you believe the Bible contradicts itself. So, you know, to, to, to make it simple, they take advantage of our ignorance and, yes. they, themse and they themselves they are ignorant too so uh, uh, when two ignorant meet what you what you expect you know <laughs> you know so we, we have we have to be we have to be uh, uh, we have to work in ourselves we have to study 
Uh, otherwise, any any fool can fool us, and this is what I say always: if a fool can fool you, how fool are you? <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, 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 this is exactly what happened with people like uh, uh, Muhammadan. You know, Muhammadan who denied that Jesus uh, uh, who he is, and yet they claim that he is just a prophet. Yet in the Quran it says that Jesus he created from the mother bird. Jesus he resurrected people from the death. Jesus is right now alive. Jesus he, uh, uh, he you know. Uh, he can read your mind. Jesus, he knew the unseen. But the Quran says that nobody can know the unseen save God. So in order to know really who is Jesus, you need to read the book and know it all. And then they cannot play games with you. Because as just uh, Sam, he did, he connected the image together. What Sam was doing here, he show you pictures of God present in many places in the Bible. And about people witness that they saw God, but yet nobody can see God. So in order to understand the how they cannot see God, yet they saw God, this is the only way. It cannot be other choice that they knew the Messiah, the existence of the Messiah. Like, you know, in the book of Isaiah, uh, Sam, when, when uh, uh, there is something about Jesus uh, uh, to, to, to defeat them too, what do you think? Oh yeah, in Isaiah 9, it uh -huh. talks about a child born, Yelad Yulad, mm -hmm. a son given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, CP. That's El Gibor. Mighty God is the only, that title is only used for the true God in Isaiah 10, 21. It says Yahweh is the Mighty God. How do you have a child who's born, who's the Mighty God, who sits on David's throne, if he's not Almighty God, whoever, who always existed, who now was born as a child? Because it says, unto us a child is born, so he's going to be born as a baby. But for this baby to be mighty God, that means he was there before he was born as a child. Yeah. You can't be mighty God. How is that possible? Yeah, and uh, what about uh, when uh, uh, when the Messiah, he asked the Jews, what do you say about the Messiah? What do you think about that phrase too? I mean, Jesus again and again confirming who he is. Hey, uh, rabbis, hey, uh, Jews, what do you think about the Messiah? What do they say? They say he is the son of David, right? What Jesus was respond? Yep. I will let uh, Sam explain. Yeah, and but they'll say, oh yeah, that's true because David saw the human Jesus being exalted to heaven to become Lord. That's how they try to explain it away, you see? But here's the problem. Here's the problem. You ask them this question because Jesus said, how is it that David by the Spirit said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. David calls him Lord. How is he his son? That's Mark 12, 35, 37. Now, let me show you how to refute them. Let me show you how to refute them. They're going to say, oh yeah, because David saw the human Jesus resurrected to go to heaven to sit on God's throne as Lord. Here's your problem. According to the Old Testament, Jews cannot have any other Lord in heaven besides Yahweh. There is no other Lord that reigns on heaven's throne besides Yahweh, the true God. And proof of it is, go to Psalm 123, verses 1 to 2. Psalm 123, verses 1 to 2. Psalm 73, 25, it says that we look to you as a mistress or a servant looks to his Lord or her, I'm sorry, a maid servant looks to her mistress and a servant looks to his Lord on earth. We look to you, O God, in heaven, and who do I have besides you in heaven? So the Bible is clear. You cannot have any other Lord on the throne of heaven besides Yahweh. Because in Psalm 113, verse 5, Psalm 113, verse 5, it says, Who is like the Lord who sits enthroned on high, who dwells on high? Meaning nobody, only Yahweh reigns on high, on heaven's throne, no one else. For Jesus to sit at God's right hand in heaven, on God's throne, along with the Father in heaven, to be the Lord of David, he has to be God, because an Israelite cannot call anyone else their Lord in heaven besides Yahweh. So Unitarian, you are idolaters and blasphemers if you think that's just a man. You know, uh, Sam, when Jesus said... Uh... Like, uh, what do you, uh, who do you say I am? How we can use that? Yeah, now see, this, this is their problem. They're going to tell you, yeah, when Peter says, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Yeah, because he became the son 
at the womb of Mary. See, that's the problem then. But you know what you do? Another way to bury them? If we have more time, I'll show you another way. You no destroy problem. Them. We have time. Sure, we have time. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I thought, okay. Let me give you another one. Here's how you're going to also destroy their argument. You ask them, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, was he sent to prepare for Jesus? Now, make sure you know how to ask questions. They'll say yes. He was sent to prepare for Jesus. They're not going to deny it. Say, okay, now you got a problem, my friend. You know why? In John 1, 23, John chapter 1, verse 23, John says, this is who he is. He said, John 1, 23, John the Baptist speaking, he said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Now, guys, understand that John the Baptist said, I'm the voice that Isaiah said would come in the wilderness telling people, make straight the path of the Lord. Now, John is quoting Isaiah 40, verse 3. Let's read it. Isaiah 40, verse 3, and I'll read verse 5. Isaiah 40, verse 3. A voice is calling. Clear the way of, for the Lord in the wilderness. Now, go back and look at the Hebrew. The word Lord is Yahweh. Jehovah. Some say Jehovah. Clear the, clear the way for Yahweh in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Guys, understand what the prophecy is saying. The voice is going to tell people, get ready. Get ready for our God to show up. Get ready. Yahweh is coming. Yahweh is coming. Our God is coming. That's what the voice is sent to prepare for. Verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord, the glory of Yahweh will be revealed. And all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, this is what you tell the Unitarian. Isn't it true John the Baptist came to prepare for Jesus? Yes. Isn't it also true that John the Baptist said, I am that voice in the wilderness of Isaiah 40, verse 3. They're going to have to say yes. But hold on, Unitarian. Isaiah 40 says that voice in the wilderness, who's John the Baptist, is preparing people for the coming of Yahweh. God Almighty, our God, Israel's God. So now, if John is that voice of Isaiah, that means John is going to prepare people for the coming of Yahweh, our God. But the one that John prepared for is Jesus. That means Jesus is Yahweh, Israel's God, whom John was sent to prepare for, because Jesus is that Yahweh of Isaiah 40, that was to come after John was sent to prepare for his way. End of story, Unitarian. The Jesus is Yahweh, Israel's God. Uh, uh, some some people here, uh, you know, like always, I have an issue with uh, Christians who uh, they don't really because you know when we as uh, like me, I'm coming from the Middle East, you are coming from the Middle East, they are coming from different places. So when we hear a word in Hebrew, we consider it always as a name because we do not know. Like as an example, uh, the word Mush Moshe. It's not yeah. not just a name actually. It's just it's a it's it's a statement actually. Uh, same as Jesus, same as uh, Emmanuel, same as uh, Gabriel, same as Michael. Those are not really names. They present a person, yes, but it's not really a name. It's description. It is a, 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 a statement, announcement. So when when God He said that He is Yahweh, is Yahweh is a, a name of a person or it is uh, more than that? It is describing uh, a glory uh, uh, something glorious about God uh, because as I understand there's nothing really what like when, when Moses has asked God what I will tell my people right so yeah, yeah. so what God he right. said to him he said to him I am right is that a name that's a description of the nature of God because exactly. when you speak of the name of God guys this is not like English hey what's your name Tony in the Bible, names of God refer to characteristics of God. And interestingly, even Muslims admit that, right, CP? When they talk about al exactly. al mm -hmm. even to them, the names of Allah mm -hmm. means something about Allah's character, right? Exactly. Okay, so keep in, your, keep in mind, every name of God in, in the Bible is telling you something about God. So when he says, I am Yahweh, it means I am the one who is and will do all that I say I will do. Basically, Yahweh is a promise that I am the one who is, meaning I am God, I exist, I'm almighty. And because I am the one who exists and I'm almighty, I will keep all my promises and do everything I said I will do. That's basically what Yahweh means. 
That's in Exodus 3, 13 and 15. That's what basically it means. I am and I will do all that I say. Why? Because he's almighty God. He's the one who always exists, cannot die, and there's no power that can stop him from doing what he has said and promised that he will do. So the Father is Yahweh. The Son is Yahweh. The Holy Spirit is Yahweh. Now, just to help you understand that you can have more than one person having the same name, people may not know this. If you go to Genesis 5, verse 2, and you read the Hebrew, now the King James helps you. King James, because it translates it for you. So if you don't know Hebrew, do you know, guys, that Adam and Eve, Eve, his wife, she was married to Adam. You know her name is Adam too? No. Here, Genesis 5, verse 2. I'm going to read it in the King James, because the Hebrew, it's Adam. Don't take my word for it. If you read Hebrew, go see it's Adam. But this will help you understand that a name is a description, and it can be applied to more than one person. Notice, Genesis 5, verse 2. He created them male and female. Genesis 5, verse 2. He created them male and female. He blessed them, named them Adam in the day they were created. Blessed them, named them Adam. Now, I was reading New, New American Standard Bible. Let me read the King James. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Did you guys catch it? Male and female, Adam and Eve, they're both called Adam. But wait, isn't Eve married to Adam? Yes. But then she's also called Adam. Why? Because the name Adam refers to their nature. The Adam means human being, mankind, humanity. You see? Actually, all the names in the Bible, all of them, yeah. in, in an amazing way. You see, like, uh, 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 um, this is why we need really to study more the Bible, because you will be amazed when you learn. Uh, there is a video, actually, in YouTube. You can search it. It's called Secret Code in the Book of Genesis 5. The same chapter we are reading now is show you that all the names which appear in Genesis 5, they are not really names. Like the children of Adam and then Noah and etc. You know, children of uh, so those names they are not really names. Starting from Adam, going all the way to the, all those names we see here in the in the scriptures in the front, uh, front of us, like Seth. Uh, what Seth mean? If you go and find what those names mean, you will be amazed. It is a code saying that Jesus, the Christ, the living God, is coming down to earth, like Mehlal, Mehlal as an example. His death shall. I mean, how in the world somebody would call his son his death? That doesn't make sense, right? Why do you want to call your son his death? But it's a, it's a statement, all the names, they come after each other. His death shall come, come and bring comfort to mankind. So they are talking that the Holy God is going to come down and his death will bring comfort. So all those names are not names. None of them is a name. And here is showing you how glorious this book is. This is not a normal book written by a person trying to tell us a story. Even though it might appear to us that there is a story here. Okay, this person have a son, his name is etc. And then this person, he died. But if you put the names next to each other and you translate the names, you will see that all the names confirm that our God, the Lord, the Messiah, he will come down and his death will bring comfort and will bring salvation to all mankind. And this is how powerful our book, and this is how shallow they are. So from the, you know, when somebody says, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, no way, it says God. I mean, what about uh, Sam, there's something we did not maybe cover, uh, uh, Emmanuel. Yes, yeah, see, here's the problem with them, because they'll tell you, and by the way, CP, I just put a link for everyone, Genesis 5, the names are um, prophecy of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Guys, I just posted a link to Genesis 5 because I have it on my, I have it, sorry, what happened here? I have it on my my blog, I posted it, there it goes. So click on it, and all those names that he told Genesis 5, they have a message pointing to Jesus being God who comes down. Now, as Isaiah 7, 14, there, I'm going to refute them, but I'm going to tell you what they're going to say, because it's, uh, the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel means God with us, but they're going to explain it away. They do everything. They explain everything, but I'm going to show you how to refute them. Can we use Isaiah 7, 14, that the virgin will give birth to a child who is Emmanuel, God with us? Yes, you can, but you have to know how to use it. Now, how are we going to use it? Okay. Guys, follow my, my path. Matthew 1, 21 to 23. 
Okay, we're going to go there. We're going to start there. Follow the path, how to prove it. Because they're going to say to you, no, no, no. What it means that the child is Emmanuel is that this child is a sign that God in heaven is with the child and with us. See, that's how they explain it away. See, <laughs> everything you give them, they explain away. But uh, let's refute them. Okay, so how are they going to explain it? The child born is not God in the flesh. The child is a sign for us. The God of heaven is with him and with us. The child is a sign that God is with the child and with us. That's all it means. Well, let's refute that. Okay, how do we refute it? Go to Matthew 1, 21 to 23, and I'll read it. He'll have it on the screen, but I'm going to read it here. Okay, now watch. She will bear a son. I'm re reading New American Standard Bible. doesn't matter what version, but anyway. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. They'll say, yeah, Jesus' birth is proof that God is with Jesus and with us, not that he's God. Okay, now how do you refute that? Number one, you take them to Matthew 121. And let's read Matthew 121 carefully. She will bear a son, and you, Joseph, shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So it's explaining why he's called Jesus. Remember what CP said? All these names mean something. They tell us something. So what does Jesus tell us about Jesus? The angel explains, give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now notice who's saving them from their sins. Jesus will personally save his people from their sins. That's why he's called Jesus. The word Jesus, Yeshua, is the shortened form of the Hebrew Yehoshua. Yeshua is a shortened way of saying Yehoshua. What does that mean? It means Yahweh is salvation. So what is the angel saying? Call this child Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh saves because he is the one coming to save his people from their sins. So you ask the Unitarian, who but God can save anyone from their sins? And to prove it, take them to Psalm 130, verses 7 to 8. Psalm 130, verses 7 to 8, you read, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he, the Lord Yahweh, will redeem Israel. He will save Israel from all his iniquities. Wow! Yahweh is the one who saves Israel from their sins. The child born is called Yahweh saves because that child, Jesus, will be the one to save his people from their sins, something that only Yahweh does in the Old Testament, proving that this virgin-born son must be Yahweh God in the flesh. So that's number one. The second thing you do is you then go back to Matthew 1.23. Matthew 1, 23, reread it for them. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And then Matthew tells us what it means, which translated means God with us. Guys, here's why this is astonishing. In the Greek, it literally says, the God is with us, because in the Greek it's ha theos. The God is with us. Now, how do you prove that Matthew's saying Jesus himself is the God of heaven who comes to be with us. It's Jesus who's God with us. How do you prove it? Then you go to Matthew 28, verse 20. Matthew 28, verse 20. Jesus speaking, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you. I, Jesus, am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you guys catch it? Jesus is the one who comes to be with us, and Jesus is the one who says, I'll remain with all of you till the end of the age. Jesus is God who comes to dwell with us and will remain with us till the end of the age. Now, CP, how can a mere man be with all believers all over the world from the time he went to heaven till the end of the world? How can he do that if he's just a man? No way. It's impossible. Uh, somebody saying, I, if, sometimes I find some people they say, they say this stuff. Do you agree with everything Sam he says? 
I mean, do you see me? Are you seeing me debating, Sam? Or, you know, I mean, what's wrong with people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I just want to say, CP, I don't know what's wrong I, with people. Uh, yeah. I just want to share this. I'm not saying this in front of everyone. The, uh, this is the truth before God. There's no one that can compare with CP when it comes to Islam, destroying it. God has put him in a, one league. He's in a league of his own. I'd be stupid to want to debate him. Yeah, but no, that she is saying, do you agree, agree with you about the Bible? For sure I agree with him. What are you talking about? So why he is here, why I'm here? <laughs> yes. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, 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 Sam, uh, we learned a lot today, and I'm very happy to have you. Maybe we should do more of this together. And uh, actually, uh, uh, Sam himself, he keep inviting me. Uh, but because yes. I do my service most of the time in the morning, my time, because I want to reach out to Muslims in Indonesia. We have a huge number of Muslims who watch my videos, millions and millions. This is why I asked Sam, he said, because this request was actually from Indonesian people to refute those who try to deceive the Christians in Indonesia, to divide us and to make us leave the faith. Because being not a person who believes in Trinity, you are leaving Christianity. You are yes. flying away. You are the same as the Muhammad and you are a pagan. You are a false person. So be aware of false teachers. If you want to learn about really, do you have a question about the Bible? This is uh, some specialty. You, you know, my specialty is, is my specialty. His specialty is different. Now, I want to warn you. Sam Shamoon is very tough, but I am tough too. But too some, <laughs> some of you might say, okay, Sam, he is so hard on us. I'm afraid he actually to go to his channel, my friend, because he have a passion in it, because he loves Christ, because he speaks from his heart. So he's tough. You know, when Jesus, he went inside the temple, he flipped the tables. So are you going to say, I'm not going to listen to Jesus? If you see that image, Jesus is flipping the tables on those who they are made the house of my father, a buying a marketplace. So this is what Sam he do. He flipped the table. So don't be afraid of asking Sam because he loves you. He want to help you. And he might be tough sometime. He, he, he might lose patience because the job we do is not easy. It's not easy. Yes. We got all kinds of questions and people attack us. People make videos about us. I mean, we have enemies around the world. The devil and his kingdom are fighting us. So be bear patient with them and understand that when you sit in that chair, trying to speak the truth, you created a lot of enemies without even starting, without saying anything. Just sit in that chair and says, I'm going to share the truth with you. The second you do, you, you, you do that, the devil and his kingdom will be against you. So, I like I have, by the way, the, my, my neighbor, he did not get the grass for the last 30 days. Today, he decided to get the grass. And here we go, Sam, at the same time. <laughs> same time. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's Satan attacking us. And yeah. just to confirm, my yeah. anger with my brothers is not out of hate. It's because it hurts me and breaks my heart. My Christian brothers and sisters are not knowing the Bible the way they should and letting these blasphemers twist the Bible and destroy people's faith. That's why I get frustrated. Yeah, That's why. Yeah. It's based on love, not based off, uh, you know, he, uh, he is passionate. He, uh, he is a warrior. And uh, uh, this is why I invite you actually always to watch his videos, to join his channel. Uh, Sam, if there's any one more things you want to say before we go? Because today yes. we share too many information. And I, as you know, you, they will take your video right now, the Indonesian people. And they will add subtitle and guess what millions of indonesians are going to watch this video so today we did really great service for christians in indonesia not only for around the world because this video will be translated specifically number one to indonesia my, my i want to tell the indonesian brothers because i focus a lot on the trinity please go to my youtube channel download and put subtitles on my videos and take clips you have my permission because 90 percent of what i talk about is about the trinity so if these indonesian brothers are listening go to my youtube channel you have my permission upload them download them make clips put subtitles do whatever you can to advance the kingdom of jesus save indonesians from the lies of unitarians and these cults in islam and reveal to them the beautiful trinity father son and spirit you do not need to ask me. I'm giving you permission. Do it for the glory of Jesus. And guys, keep praying that God will give me the health I need to serve him. He doesn't need me. We need the Lord if he wants to use me. And my daughters, God bless them. And CP, do let me know when you have an available date because I do want to get you on my, on my session. 
All right, so, my, my, my brother Sam, uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we are all thankful for having you. We are thankful for all those people who came to join. And uh, don't forget, guys, to subscribe to uh, uh, Sam's channel. Maybe the admin can post his YouTube. Subscribe to him so you can be notified when he's online. And don't hesitate to ask him a question. If when it's come to the yes. Bible, uh, it's better to go to Sam because you see, my channel here is about cooking Muhammad and smoking him. <laughs> so I, I, I refute the Muslims about the Bible. I get them busted, no problem. But if you want more details, a clear, more like, uh, 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 let us say, uh, in, in details for anything, then you go to Sam and he will be happy to help you. He's, this is his passionate and this is what he'd love to do. So thank you, Sam, for being here with us, my, my brother. And uh, again, guys, if you like to support our brother Sam, please support him. This brother is a very, I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, the word poor, the word poor is not an insult. The word poor is a glorious. The Lord, he says, plus those are the poor. This man is a poor man. He's not a rich man. He don't have a palace. He don't have, uh, a, you know, if he is a Muslim, the Muslim, they will, they will give him salary every month. So please support him. He designate his time. And we need to support the good ones. Those are the good ones. If we don't support them, what about you say, I'm going to give you a cup of coffee, Sam, you know? Uh, uh, so a cup of coffee will not really hurt you. I don't want anyone, you know, to, to, to uh, uh, Sam, he did not ask me. And again, this is not him asking me to ask you. He don't do that. He, you know, uh, uh, I am saying, shouldn't we support those who stand for the truth? So please support them. Please stand with them. Please take care of them because they are the one who can help you and nothing in this earth is for free if this guy he go to the station to put some gas in his car he cannot say i'm sam shamoon give it to me for free so please help him support him and i will be happy to see many of you doing that thank you sam for being here love you. may the lord love bless you. you take care my friend take care all right well we are so glad to have uh, sam and you know actually i i i believe sam is a very a uh, lovable, lovable person. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly in English. Uh, and uh, he, because he is decent, you know, decent ones, they say things as it is. They are not politically correct. And because they are not politically correct, people, they get offended. But guess what? You need those. You do not need the one who is politically correct. We have, we are sick of them. Enough is enough. We don't want more of them. We need people who they are decent. We need people who say things as it is. We need someone who say, this is red, this is black, this is blue. Not someone he says, I believe in rainbow. Rainbow is no color. It's all colors together. Which one you are talking about? We need a truthful people. And because they are truthful, they fight them. If you are perfectly correct, you know, I mean, I cannot e even keep my videos on my channel. I have to change my channel every day. Why? Because we are not perfectly correct. What we say is against the guideline of YouTube. What we say actually is against the guideline of every hypocrite. And this is always prove who we are. We don't take a side, we side only with the Lord. We don't side with the person. We don't side with the person. Never side with the person. Side with the truth. And the Lord, he said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the door. And when the Bible describes him as Emmanuel, how you ask me to show me one verse? Show me one verse where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. When Jesus says, well, if he is the, the Messiah, he is the son of David, then how David call him Lord, God. And yet you say to you, show us one verse where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. When Jesus says, before Abraham I am. When Jesus says, my kingdom is not in this earth, I am from above. They say to you, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. That is the death who his ears in the size of an elephant, playing dumb. 
So glory to him. He always provide us with witnesses who witness for the truth. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. I will try to go live again tomorrow if I can. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Saturday. I think I will. You know, why not? I mean, don't you guys miss me? I miss me too. <laughs> I'm just joking. So I, I will try tomorrow to go live on air. Actually, I might try even go later at night if I have time. Uh, but we need, we need more uh, uh, people who study the Bible so we can have more Sam and we can have more Christian friends. We don't want to be the only one here. You see, we want to compete together to serve the Lord. I want to, I want to see people jealous. Jealous for good. Jealousy is bad. But when you are jealous to serve the Lord, that's a good jealousy. I want to see people, they say, okay, you know what? Why I cannot learn the Bible the same as I heard today? Why I cannot refute the liars the same as I heard today? Why I'm lazy? The book is there. The knowledge is there. And people who want to help us are there. So why I am lazy? My friend, your child go to school. He hear all of garbage. The Bible is the vaccine. The word of God is the vaccine. Before you send your child, before you yourself go, you have to have the animation to fight the devil. And that is the book. He said, read the books, search the truth, and when you find it, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. I cannot find better amazing words than this. Set you free, not just you will know. Truth will bring you freedom. Freedom from deception. Freedom from false. Freedom from being silly and stupid. Our enemy, number one enemy, is our deception. Sometimes we deceive ourselves. Sometimes we fool ourselves. Sometimes we deny the truth because the truth hurt, even though we knew it's the truth. The truth, my friend, will free you. Learn how to be decent. Learn how to say things as it is. And all of us, we are sinners, speaking decent. Knowing the truth doesn't mean that we are holy. The Lord, he says, be holy like your father. It's a project you work in, but you are not holy. But he wanted us to go up. He don't want us. He, he came down. To level us up be holy not like muhammad who promised us women and children and garbage and praise it of gold i mean how silly <laughs> praise it of gold in heaven uh, thank you very much is that and and imagine the quran promised me a piece of a cloth it's called istabra which is like gucci how silly how silly i will wear gucci are you serious I cannot really say how much I appreciate this God who want to give me Gucci. This is God. So we notice how holy the teaching of the Lord and how silly the teaching of his enemies. And yes, Muhammad is his enemy. He is so silly, so shallow, so down to the point he promised me a piece of fabric. He promised me I will have a carpet. He promised me I will have a couch. How silly. And what is happening in the couch? The God of the boom boom. My friend, the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And the fruit of Jesus is there, and the fruit of the faith of Muhammad is there. And the fruit of all those people who are trying to take you away from Christ is there too. Don't listen to them. The Bible is our shield. And by the shield of the Lord, we are protected. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all. And I will see you soon again. Don't forget to download the videos. And this is a, a, a video made specifically to answer those who are in Indonesia. But for sure, everybody is welcome to download the video and share it around. My books in Polish and in Serbian is going to be published soon uh, uh, for free as a gift from me for, from the people in, uh, in Poland and people in Serbia, Croatia, etc. is going to be for free and soon we will post the links for those books so people can download them and they can have them. Thank you very much for being here. God is good. Christ is Lord and everything else is false. Thank you. God bless you. See you soon. Bye-bye.